Hey everyone, if you're looking for fashion advice, I am not your girl, but I have some really great tips on how to create a very sustainable, eco-friendly, a minimalist, and high-quality wardrobe. Like the good millennial I am, I once watched a documentary and I changed my life accordingly. So it was called The True Cost, and I definitely recommend watching it. It talks about the pollution and the human cost of the fashion industry. The fashion industry is actually the second most polluting industry, second only to oil, and there are a few reasons for this. The first is the amount of chemicals that it takes to create synthetic or artificial fibers. That's things like polyester, rayon, nylon, acetate. It also takes a lot of chemicals to create the dyes that we use for clothing. Uh, next, there's a lot of water that's needed to grow the cotton, which we use for so much clothing. Uh, and another big piece is the very fast turnover rate of clothing that ends up in landfills. So the term for this is fast fashion clothing that is intentionally poor quality, uh, it's not designed to last a long time, and fashions that go in and out of style very quickly to keep consumers buying more clothing and, and tossing it out. So this produces a huge volume of waste. I have another personal ax to grind with much of the fashion industry, which is the eating disorders that it actively promotes and encourages in the runway models that, that are hired to promote uh, many of these brands and used in shoots for many of these brands. As somebody who has healed from an eating disorder and I specialize in helping women heal their relationship with food and body image, that really hurts my heart. Uh, eating disorders have one of the highest mortality rates of any mental illness and I believe that these many of these companies have a responsibility to, uh, to not hire disordered eating models and to not encourage that behavior or to provide resources to heal it, but they really do the opposite. The degree of emaciation that we see on runways and so many uh, runway models, that is not safe or healthy for most women's bodies. So with all that said, I do have some qualms about directly supporting these companies because I have that value out of alignment with them. There are three qualities that I look for when I'm buying clothing. The first is that it is natural fiber. So that would include cotton, wool, silk, cashmere, blends of those. Basically, if it comes from a plant or an animal, it uses a lot less chemicals in, in the processing. It's gonna be a lot safer for your body and the environment in general. Uh, artificial or synthetic fibers include rayon, nylon, polyester. Um, I have some workout wear and sports bras that are made from those fibers because I haven't found many other great options, but I, I really try to minimize that, especially just because it doesn't feel as good on my body. I've always naturally gravitated towards natural fibers. I love good fabrics. I love well-made you know, luxurious fabrics, so I naturally gravitate towards that. These natural fibers, they also last a lot longer. They're much more durable. They wash better, uh, they hold up longer for many, many years, and I think they also just look better and higher quality. The next thing I look for in clothing is that it's been previously owned. I would say about 90% of the clothes that I've bought in the last two years, uh, with the exception of socks and underwear, is previously owned. I love this because I'm able to find really great high quality pieces that I can actually afford. Uh, you know, at, at full retail price, a lot of the items that I, I wear um, would either be out of my budget or I just wouldn't feel comfortable spending that money on clothes anyways. So this is a really great option for me. Um, and I'm gonna give you a few insider tips on how to find the best previously owned clothing in just a moment. The other thing I look for that I already mentioned is I don't like to wear visible brands. That's a personal preference. It's based on value alignment and I don't really like to give free advertising for companies that aren't paying me probably because I have a background in blogging. Okay, so here are some tips for finding the best previously owned clothes. The first website I recommend is an online consignment store called The Thread Up. They have a huge inventory and it can be a little overwhelming. So here's what I do and what I highly recommend is you search for the brands that you know you like and you use the size uh, search option as well. 
so you narrow it down to the specific sizes and the brands that you like. So what you can do and what I've done is I've gone into stores and I just jot down, okay, this size fits me in jeans in this brand. This size fits me in tops in this brand. This brand fits me in this size for, you know, jackets. So I just make some of those notes and then I go find options online from the thread up and I save a lot of money um, and I get like new clothes that way. I do have a uniform. I really, I've really created quite a, a minimalist closet um, for me. Uh, I have basically what you see back here and then an another rack of like jackets and off-season clothes. Um, but I, I do have a uniform essentially in the summer. It's these silk tops that I like and then I swap out different, um, like three different shorts and, and bottoms. Um, and then I have a few blazers, one in black and gray and white, so I keep it really simple and I just switch those out with uh, the different tops. But that makes this online consignment shopping really easy for me. I just plug in the brand that I, look, that I like in the shirt, I plug in my size, I usually find options. Um, and then my uniform for winter, which I am currently wearing, consists of uh, one of a, a few neutral toned sweaters in natural fibers, um, some different pants and, and jeans and bottoms that I swap out. The other online consignment store that I love and recommend is the realreal.com. So this is definitely more of a posh luxury website, the really high quality, um, like shoes and, and bags as well. But I prefer it for the clothing, and again, I utilize the search function for the brands that I like, for the sizes. I also utilize the um, price uh, filter on this one as well. I found some really great silk and cashmere clothing for um, you know under 50 bucks here. One more tip, and this is kind of random, but it's a game changer, especially if you're getting used sweaters from either of these websites or from uh, actual consignment stores. You might notice that they have some pilling this is a lady's face razor from Amazon. That's what you put in the search bar. Um, and this is magical. I know there are like electric sweater shavers you can use. I haven't used those before. You just lay the fabric flat on a flat surface and you just carefully shave off the little pilling and clothing that looked kind of used or worn, you can really refresh it and make it look much nicer with this. I've also mentioned this before, but I did Marie Kondo's The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up book. I went through her, her book and her process uh, many years ago with my clothing, and that was just revelatory. And out of that, I established this uniform that I talked about, and it's been so wonderful taking that mental energy out of my morning of trying to figure out what to wear and match it. Uh, and I also just realized, uh, you know, my personality just feels best with these neutral colors and with these very, you know, basic classic pieces that I can miss, mix and match and keep super simple. I hope that this was uh, a, a nice diversion from the heavier topics that I've been talking about recently with scientific uh, cancel culture and censorship and, and intuitive plant medicine and spiritual well-being and the corruption of, of <laughs> Western medicine. So I wanted to add a little, a little fun thing in there. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and make sure you are subscribed, hit the notifications to catch my future videos, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.